house you live in. Do you really need all the space you have? Maybe not your student house, but your parents house? Do you find the stuff accumulates in hidden corners that you might not see for several months or even years? I want to talk to you today about the idea that you could be living in a smaller space, resulting in less environmental impact and an overall happier life. In Canada in 1975, the average home size was 1,050 square feet. By 2010, that had almost doubled to 1,950 square feet. During the same time, the average number of people living in a household has decreased. Most of these big homes are built farther from the city in suburbs where a car or even two is a necessity of life. This idea of big houses has been perpetuated by the media as the idea of success. Everyone in your family needs their own big bedroom as well as a guest room maybe a home office, and definitely more than one bathroom. Though, as we saw the results in America not so long ago, people are buying these big houses that they simply can't afford. I'd like you to think about efficient design rather than bigger design. First of all, get rid of that spare bedroom by putting a pull-out couch in the living room. There's almost certainly room to put at least two kids in one bedroom. Replace their double beds with twin bunk beds. There are even designs nowadays for beds that fold away into the wall, acting as a desk during er, in the day and having extra floor space, then transforming into a, a bed at night. In the master bedroom, do you really need a king-sized or queen-sized bed? Try downsizing to a double. Do you need a dining room as well as a need in kitchen? And how about all those useless hallways? If you eliminate all these frivolous things, you can easily fit a family of four into a two-bedroom house with either one or two bathrooms. You could even easily fit them into an apartment. But there's no backyard for kids to play in, you say. A smaller space means more time exploring the city you live in and less time with the family isolated in separate rooms. With all the money you save from the reduced footprint, you could spend it on ultra-efficient furniture setups or more activities and vacations with the kids. If you live in an apartment or a small home downtown, you can be within walking or biking distance to everything you need. Parks down the street, swim lessons they can get themselves to, and even parents don't need to spend hours in traffic getting to work, which means more family quality time. This not only gives the chance for more independence for kids that aren't of driving age, but less money on gas, car insurance, and stress from traffic. Less space to clean, less time spent trying to find things, and less chance of holding on to things just for the sake of it. With a smaller home, your ecological footprint is greatly reduced. Not only do you have less impact on the land since your house is physically taking up less space, your lot size can be smaller without noticing a reduction in the yard space. You spend significantly less on heating and cooling because you aren't heating rooms that you aren't in, and smaller houses obviously consume less building material. Not to mention the reduced consumption when you aren't trying to fill your big home with things you don't need. If you are interested in an extreme version of this, check out Tiny Houses.